All right, another early morning gym sesh. How are we gonna do this? Sunday morning driving is the best, and that's what we're doing. We're driving out to Wheat Ridge to go to the gym, because what else would you do on a Sunday? I got the train legs hard and heavy with Scott yesterday. My knee definitely needs a few days off. So it's gonna be the first push day, really, of uh, the year, in a sense. Injured myself early February and was actually recovering something then, too. So, first official push we got of the comeback year here. And basically, I'm gonna try to repeat what we did on uh, the last workout and then come in for a pull day. Both sessions, I'll do physical therapy, rehab stuff, and both sessions, I'll try to just uh, repeat or progress. It's a two to three week adaptation period in the body, so because I'm relatively detrained a little bit compared to how I was before, I really think that like just repeating my upper body workouts two to three times in a row is gonna be plenty, so I'm gonna stay safe and drive. See y'all. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the video. And uh, this is an interesting video because it's my first push day since, interesting for me, but it's my first push day since, uh, who knows, at least over a month now. So let's get into it. Started with band overhead presses with resistance from the front, and then did 12 raises to the front, 12 V raises, and then 12 side delt, kind of rear delt type raises like this here with the bottom of my palms facing the roof. So I did three presses and then did a, uh, three rounds of those and I was warmed up. So technically, you know, nine sets of the dumbbell lifts, but you could call one set, you know, three by three or three by 12. But regardless, three exercises with the dumbbells individually and the presses. Um, and before I did that, I managed a seven and a half minutes on the bike. So the bike pre-workout my left calf thickness there. Looks like some, some watery water buffalo action. Um, but yeah, uh, seven and a half minutes on the bike is enough to take my knee from feeling weird as I start to feeling pumped and like my VMO is pumped and my quads are ready and firing. So I think the bike every workout is probably every day would be nice, but the bike every workout, upper or lower, is gonna be crucial and essential. And then if I get into liking it, I can maybe start using it as a form of cardio. And um, aside from that, I'm not gonna change anything. It would be nice to have like a standing shoulder warm up, but once I get my legs warmed up and then I do my raises and stuff, I don't really have anything to complain about as far as how my body feels. So I guess going forward, um, I'm gonna be able to maintain having a push day and hopefully a pull day. I will see how uh, I feel in my next workout. So we were able to train twice this weekend, so it was a great weekend. I got to eat tons of food, which you guys have seen. I didn't film all of it, obviously, filmed a lot of it. And um, yeah, I woke up today sore. My legs feel good from Saturday, and yesterday on Sunday, this push workout has left me uh, pretty sore, um, just everywhere, shoulder especially. I just did really light band exercises and just to kind of get some blood flowing and get those kinks out. And I'm definitely sore. I would like to do a day on, day off of training, but I think what's best for me and best for really just my life is to take two days off. So I would like to push, take a day off and pull, but because I progressed on everything in this workout, um, I don't think 48 hours is enough to return to the gym. And if I did, it would be to get blood moving and to stimulate a little bit, but not progress. Um, but if I take two days off, if I take Monday and Tuesday off this week and go and pull on Wednesday, I can focus on my pulls and then focus on my shoulder rehab after the workout. So the idea is every time I go to the gym, I wanna progress on something. 
if I go to the gym and I don't feel recovered enough to progress, um, that's probably me being a little too eager to go back or me not being sure if I'm healing or not. So there's a lot of soreness in my body right now. It's good soreness, but my shoulder is exhausted and I can't tell if that's like, you know, a bummy type of feeling from injury or just exhaustion from lifting. I'm assuming it's the latter. But again, I don't want to find out the hard way. I want to just continue to progress and then get a new understanding of how my body feels. So in this workout today, we were able to bang out 60 pounds for four sets of 12 on the floor press. And not gonna lie, in the last set I was like easily, well, I wouldn't say easily approaching failure, but I was spent at the end. So I was pretty much uh, getting close to failure, which felt good. And this right here is kind of the bread and butter of my rehab. Uh, I was able to progress on this to 35 pounds, which was probably something I shouldn't have done. But now I know, luckily I stopped at nine reps. But yeah, this right here on my super spinatus, uh, basically, it's hard to describe, but where the trap and rear delt connect basically, that's where the super and infraspinatus are located. And as you push against the pillar, you tend to push behind you. And yeah, presses to the front don't really, they work up here. But if you wanna work your shoulder girdle and rotator cuff, you wanna press behind your head. I mean, I'm sure you get some work here, but <clears throat> when you have to hold something and stabilize it and move your body in different positions, you'll realize that if you stand here with the weight and you bend over 10 degrees, your supraspinatus and infraspinatus light up. And if you miss groove or do something wrong with a heavy weight, you'll tear it. Kind of what I did on my incline bench. So, <clears throat> so yeah, that's definitely not something to push. I actually grabbed a 60 pound barbell after those presses and I was like, hey, let me do standing barbell press. I'm probably good to go. But just finishing over my head, this part of my shoulder, so tired from those presses that I called it. So um, I know I've always preached, especially over the last couple of years to do compounds, but now that I spent years doing compounds and building my physique and building strength and being confident with heavy weight, I'm gonna see if I can kind of relay some of that success into maybe more accessory and movements where I can't uh, compensate and I can't function with my entire body. So pick some weaknesses I have find some movements that train them and get after it. And so since I can't pull heavy, obviously lots of curls, can't press too heavy, obviously lots of triceps. So as we increase the compounds and increase the accessory work, we'll definitely decrease the isolation, but I'm having fun. And like I said, I spent months building up my arms and shoulder girdle through presses and chin-ups. And so now with healthy, uh, connective tissue and joints, at least the ones that weren't injured. I've recovered so much that I can throw some isolation work in and just see how my body responds. So overall, I'm happy. I'm a little sore than I wanted to be. So it's gotta be two days off, I'm thinking. And these did not help. PR'd on these as well. Brutal, brutal. Thanks guys. <laughs> Sunday night cheat meal, absolutely earned. Delicious food. Delicious sesame chicken and rice. See how this Batman ice cream tastes. some of the best ice cream I've had. Way better than any Halo Top or any uh, whatever you call it. Enlightened BS. Enlightened me with this. Sun's up early today, but uh, it's time to get this weigh-in on Monday morning. At 9.15, I want to have my coffee, 
want to get my day started. So please, let's weigh in after a weekend of eating and filming and a lot of fun stuff. No, but seriously, there's a lot of food, so let's see where we're at. 203 last to weigh in. Two oh eight. Two oh eight. How do I feel about that one? <laughs>